The HP ZBook Power G7 is the 3D modeling fraternal twin of the Create G7 I reviewed on my channel in 2020. This laptop is said to be the 3D modeling go-to out of the ZBook lineup, and in this video, I will put it to the test in the most common 3D modeling software to see if it's true to its word. Let's get rocking! <laughs> If you're new to the channel, my name is Benji Kaiser. This is where you're going to find the best tech and tools for creative professionals. Now, if you're curious about the exact availability or pricing of this model, you can head down in the description below and click that link. Now, if you do make a purchase to that link, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. And that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Build quality is one notable area that HP prides themselves in regards to the ZBook lineup. They are mill standard. 810H for military standard tested. This is a 810 plus test that account for 120 plus hours of military grade testing certifications that account for drop tests, moisture, dust, grime, temperature, altitude pressure, and a whole lot more. While talking to an HP rep recently, I wanted to know how reliable their laptops really were. And I know a lot of you ask about how many years a laptop will last. And usually when I ask reps these types of questions, they get a little squirmy. However, that was not the case here. He told me that over the past five years, they have seen record low post-sale issues with the ZBook lineup. Now he said they are seeing an average of 1% of post-sale issues, which is crazy low. That means that 99% of ZBooks that hit the shelves are not going to experience any issues. I would say that that has a lot to do with the mill standard testing. Um, you should be able to get a good five plus years out of a ZBook if you treat it well. So good news there. Now, further evidence in the belief they have in the longevity of the ZBook series, they come with a three-year warranty versus the HP Omens, which come with a one-year warranty. Now, not to hate on the Omen, as I love it, but just showing you a direct comparison to how much they really think these laptops are of quality and will last a long time. They're willing to put a longer warranty behind it. Now, as I pulled the HP ZBook out of the box, I was pleased to see a thin and light laptop that held a firm attention to detail. Smooth beveled edges, a single hinge spanning nearly the entire bottom bezel of the screen, and a large trackpad suitable for the on-the-go creator and 19% smaller than the previous generation of the ZBook. Now, speaking of the hinge, the laptop has zero screen flex and opens and closes smoothly with only one hand, a testament of the extra steps it takes to produce a durable laptop. Now, one really neat and discreet aspect of the laptop is the lip design on the screen bezels when closed. This is such a big deal to me because it shows the thoughtfulness in design. They don't design the computer and then say, hey, we need to put a notch on the keyboard deck so that you can open the screen. They built that into the screen so that opening and closing the design, it open and closing the design, open and closing the screen is built into the design. While we are talking about the screen, let's take a look at the color gamut range, color accuracy, and brightness of the HP ZBook Power G7. According to my test, the HP ZBook Power with the Ultra HD display can reach 468 nits at full screen brightness and has a color gamut range of 98% sRGB, 78% Adobe RGB, and 79% DCI-P3. So the color gamut range is solid. However, the color accuracy comes in at greater than three. So know that it has some good color gamut range, but this isn't exactly optimized to be very color accurate, at least out of the factory. You might be able to buy an aftermarket data color spider X color calibration tool, which will help you get better color accuracy. Um, but you'll see. And also to note for the screen brightness, when I turned this laptop on for the first time, it was noticeably brighter than most laptops that I have in my studio. Like I actually had to turn the brightness down because I was not used to a computer being that bright. So well done on the brightness of this laptop HP. Being that this is a 3D modeling focused laptop, the color gamut range being not great is not a deal breaker, but if you're a photo editor, designer, or video editor, I would recommend that you choose the ZBook Create over the power model. If you wanna see my head-to-head -head comparison, you can check that out in the YouTube cards above once I release it. I think the Create will make a better, maybe like video editing, photo editing, something where you need really good color accuracy. So check that out if you're interested. The top cover, bottom cover, and keyboard deck on the HP ZBook are anodized aluminum. Also fun fact, 7.8% of the plastic material on this laptop is post-consumer recycled. So if you're into that sort of thing, 
they've got you covered. I want to mention as well, the side panels are a part of the keyboard deck. So the entire keyboard deck cover and extending down the side panels is one solid piece of aluminum. I like this because it removes any risk of these two pieces separating over time or during an accidental drop. Now this laptop weighs in at 4.1 pounds and at a thickness of 0.9 inches thick. The 83 watt hour battery should give you roughly eight hours of web browsing battery life and about five to six hours of design and 3D modeling battery life. Not only does it have pretty solid battery life, but it is equipped with a quick charge feature. You can charge the ZBook power to 50% in 30 minutes and 100% in just an hour and a half. Now you'll have to power down the computer to get into this quick charge mode. Um, but if say, if you know, you pull into a Starbucks on your road trip or, you know, throughout your day, if you're getting lunch, just turn off your computer, plug it in and you'll have 50% battery in just 30 minutes. Pretty awesome. Another power saving feature is Z graphics awareness algorithms. Basically it monitors the ports display brightness. And if the display is at a lower brightness and not a lot of ports are in use, it will transfer power to the GPU to give you more graphical performance and even save you a little battery life. Pretty smart computer, eh? I'd say so. The keyboard on the ZBook Power is wonderful. It is extremely reminiscent of the HP Omen and ProBook keyboard, which I recently reviewed. The keyboard is so quiet. I really dig the soft touch keys. Plus they are firm and snappy when pressed. Another thing to point out is the lack of keycap wobble. The ZBook does not have any keycap wobble, which is great and gives you that really confident firm snap when pressing the keys. Basically what I mean by keycap wobble is when you press the edge of the key, it can kind of wobble a little bit and makes the key press feel mushy and non-committal. With the Power G7, no matter where you push on the key, you get a satisfying firm press and snappy release. The trackpad is great. It has excellent press and click sensitivity. Dragging and dropping objects is smooth, and I did not experience any errors through my extensive testing. Okay, here is an audio sample of both the trackpad and the keyboard so you can hear it for yourself. The HP ZBook Power G7 has a generous amount of ports, which is nice to see as so many laptops continue to slice off ports from their spec list. The ports are coming up on the screen. As you can see, if they fit your use cases, then it's a good pick. That's usually how I treat the ports. Sometimes people are like, hey, what are the best ports to have on my laptop? And I say, hey, what do you use in your daily workflow? Those are the ports you should get. If you're enjoying this video and getting some value, then ever so gently, just gently, press down on that like button. And if you want to get more videos like this, then make sure you subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of the future uploads. Now, this laptop does come with a 720p webcam so you don't miss out on those crucial virtual meetings if the need arises. A little extra win for the webcam is the manual webcam cover as to confidently avoid all cyber spying attempts. So that's pretty rad. This is the webcam on the HP ZBook Power. Pretty good, a little grainy, I think. Could definitely have some improvements. And then here's the manual shut off, gone, back on. So there's the webcam. The HP ZBook Power G7 has excellent ventilation on the keyboard deck, behind the keyboard deck, and bottom cover. It features HP's latest Z Vapor Force chamber technology with predictive fan algorithms. This technology, predicts how much heat the GPU and CPU are going to produce based on the tasks performed, and it increases the fan slowly before it just desperately throws the fans into like savior mode. So rather than hammering the fans to full blast as soon as the laptop reaches high temperatures, you'll notice it slowly increases the fans. Now this is quite pleasant compared to the average gaming laptop, one of the features that really sets the ZBook series apart from other creator laptops. Now the real benefit here is less distracting fan noise and less wear and tear on your machine. Okay, that's all good and well, but how did it do cooling the laptop? Did it even cool the laptop effectively? During the 3D modeling benchmarks, the average Average temp was around 67 degrees Celsius, and at its peak, I saw about 76 degrees Celsius. To get a comparison to other laptops you might be considering, here are the full thermal charts.
The vapor chamber technology is no joke. It really does keep this laptop cool. Okay, but how loud did the fans get in order to keep this laptop cool? Now at idle, the fan had no fan noise, which is great. During web browsing, it was about 35 decibels. And then for the 3D modeling benchmarks, we saw 51 decibels of fan noise. Now that we've gone through all of the details concerning the build and usability of this laptop, let's dive into the performance specs. The ZBook Power I'm reviewing comes with the Intel 10th Gen Xeon W10855M with 6 cores and 12 threads, the NVIDIA Quadro T2000 Max-Q with 4 gigs of VRAM, 64 gigs of RAM, and a 2 terabyte SSD. Now, something that is pretty awesome, uh, considering you know all this new work from home life, is that the ZBook is equipped with what's called Z Central Remote Boost, and it comes with a license included absolutely free. Now, apparently, they used to charge for this, but they don't anymore, so it's your benefit. Basically, what you can do is remote into any device and harness the total power of the device that you're remoting into and only transfer pixels. So you're not actually transferring data, it's only imagery. So it's very secure, it's very fast, and it comes with the ZBook Power G7. Now in Geekbench single core and multi-core, the ZBook Power handled itself well, attaining a 1,334 on the single core benchmark, placing it on the mid to upper end of my test charts. And for the multi-core score, it did not fare as well. Um, it was still good, but it wasn't great. It received a 4,842, which places it in the middle of my test results, being that this is a, you know, six core 12 thread, it doesn't have, you know, those higher eight core 16 threads, um, which would give it better multitasking, but it still did very well. Moving into the 3D modeling benchmarks, let's take a look at the Cinebench R20 and R23. The ZBook crushed it pretty hard in the Cinebench test. It scored a 3,239 in Cinebench R20 and a 6,893 in Cinebench R23. Now, how well does the ZBook Power G7 handle the most common 3D modeling programs? For Autodesk 3ds Max, we saw a 94.28. For Autodesk Maya, we saw a 115.75. For Autodesk Revit, we saw a 109.08. For PTC Creo, we saw a 112.56. And for SolidWorks, we saw a 117.23. For the Blender Classroom benchmark, the Zebook Power was able to complete that test using the GPU in 3 minutes and 41 seconds. Let's talk about the various 3D modeling benchmarks quickly so you can grapple with the diverse scores that we are seeing out of the ZBook Power. The lower scores on the 3DS Max and Maya benchmark are due to the lower core and thread count of the Xeon processor, as well as the lower amount of VRAM in the GPU that the Power G7 model I am reviewing comes with. That's four gigs of VRAM in that GPU. The CPU higher core and thread count in the models beating out the ZBook Power is advantageous and shows how Autodesk Maya and 3ds max benefit from those aspects of the cpu it also is important to note that autodesk maya and 3ds max benefit from more powerful gpus this is where the zbook power falls behind as it has a lower 4 gig vram equipped graphics card compared to the 8 gig cards in the models on the top end of the charts now we are seeing similar results in ptc creo as maya and 3ds max so i will not repeat myself here in autodesk revit cores and threads are not as important as clock speed this is why we are seeing the G7 make its way to the top of the charts in this benchmark. Revit also likes RAM, and the ZBook I'm reviewing has a lot of it, at 64 gigs in fact. Regarding the GPU, although it does not have the higher VRAM, Revit is relatively optimized for Quadro workstation cards. So we are seeing this benefiting the ZBook, helping it move up amongst the 8 gig card models. Now Revit does not require a Quadro workstation card. As you can see, it gets great use out of the GeForce gaming cards and the other laptops surrounding the Power G7, but do note that you cannot get a official Revit support if you have a GeForce card. They only support professional cards in regards to their support team, cards such as the Quadro series and Radeon Pro series. So if official support is important to you, then this laptop is a winner hands down. But SolidWorks is a whole different story. SolidWorks almost exclusively supports workstation cards such as the Quadro T2000 in the ZBook Power, which is why we are seeing it dominate the benchmarks along with the RTX 3000 in the Asus ProArt StudioBook 17. The reason the ZBook pulls ahead of the StudioBook, even though the StudioBook has a larger VRAM count of 6 gigs of VRAM versus the ZBook's 4 gigs, is the single core clock speed of the workstation equipped Xeon processor. SolidWorks is less concerned with a beefy GPU as much as it likes clock speed. 
Now the HP ZBook G7 is highly tuned for Autodesk, Revit, and SolidWorks. If you've been looking for a laptop for these programs, then you have found a winner with this laptop. However, we are seeing some less than optimal performance out of it when it comes to Autodesk Maya, 3ds Max, and PTC Creo. If those are the programs you're considering, then I would honestly recommend considering the fraternal twin of the power, which is the HP ZBook Create G7. There are affiliate links for both models in the description below this video, but do note that I will be filming or have already filmed, depending on when you're watching this video, a comparison video between the G7 Create and the G7 Power. Um, so you can click or tap the screen over here to check out that review when it's available. Do note they're both powerful, they're both great laptops, but have slightly different um, wins for the use cases. Until next time, my name is Benji Kaiser. Go out there, keep editing, keep designing, keep creating, and I'll see you here in the next video.